Hey y'all, I'm Alicia. Today we're going to talk about all of the books that I read in June. I'm a little bit behind, so let's just get right into the books. In the month of June, I read a total of 11 books. Out of those, one of them was a middle grade book. I'm slowly expanding more and more outside of my comfort zone. I also read one young adult book. Out of the 11 books that I read, two of them were short story collections and two of them were nonfiction. So starting off with nonfiction, the first book that I read is How Far the Light Reaches, A Life in Ten Sea Creatures by Sabrina Imbler. So this is part memoir, but it's also part marine biology nature writing. It's also a collection of essays in a way. This book is divided into 10 essays in which Sabrina Imbler talks about a particular unique sea creature in each essay and then she uses those unique things about that creature as a catalyst to talk about her own experiences. I personally really enjoyed the way that this memoir was laid out because I got to learn a little bit more about sea creatures while also learning about Sabrina Imbler's life and the parts where she does talk about about her life. Those moments were very raw and tender and vulnerable. I will say that in some essays, the connections she was trying to draw were a little far-fetched, but overall, I think it really worked. This also details the experience of a mixed-race queer woman in a largely white male-dominated field. You want to read a little bit more about that, this is one that I do recommend. The other nonfiction that I read is Rethinking Fandom, How to Beat Sports Industrial Complex at Its Own Game by Craig Calcitera. I picked this up because over the last couple of years, I've been getting more and more into hockey, and growing up, my family watched tons of soccer. So naturally, when I saw this in the library, it piqued my interest because it dissects how owners and executives sort of rely on this blind loyalty from fan bases and the ways in which these owners and executives often act against a team's best interest. He talks primarily about basketball, baseball, and American football and how it is a business that is run as a business and not necessarily about the sport. And it asks you to consider like, where do you draw the line when you're supporting these teams or players? If you love sports, and want to dissect that. This is one that I found interesting. I don't watch basketball, baseball, and American football, so some of the references went over my head, but it was just still a really interesting read. There are two short story collections that I read. The first one of those is Mouth Stories by Paluma Ghosh. This is a short story collection that blends surrealism with speculative fiction elements and horror. They're also sapphic and very bizarre. A lot of the short stories contain monsters, but I feel like in the past when I've read about monsters, I've read them in a way in which they're alienating. The way in which like the elements of a monster are described are what alienates them from the rest of society, whereas in this short story collection, a lot of those like monstrous elements are embraced. I liked the short story collection and I'm excited excited to see what the author does in the future. The next short story collection that I finished is Every Drop is a Man's Nightmare by Megan Kamale Kakimoto. Megan Kamale Kakimoto is both Hawaiian and Japanese. So this short story collection and its stories really revolve around that particular identity. But apart from that, it's also this unflinching and celebration of womanhood and everything that comes along with that. Some of the stories contain themes of beauty standards, sexual awakening and sexual desire. They're weird and dark and at times very graphic. The next book that I finished is the one middle grade book that I read. It's called Faran Arzud and the Ring of Fate by Deba Sargapur. This is the beginning to a fantasy series and it was really fun. I'm not really sure how to rate this because one, I'm not the target audience, but two, I don't read tons of middle grade. This is me kind of dipping my feet back in to see what I like. As an adult, I actually had a lot of fun reading this and I think the themes that were explored were age appropriate but also apply as an adult. So in this one, we are following a 12-year-old girl who doesn't get to see her father often. She sees him once a year and she's often wondering why her father is absent in her life. So she ends up accidentally accidentally making a wish to this magical ring to bring their family back together and when she does this she accidentally traps her father in this ring and also finds out that he's a jinn lord and that she's half jinn herself so this takes her on a magical adventure to undo that wish 
she also finds out she has a brother and it's essentially a quest again really really fun there's themes of found family here of sibling dynamics and all battling two different worlds and identities this has muslim representation and gin magic and it was just really fun to read the one young adult book that I read is The Grief Keeper by Alexandra Villasante. This was a book that I'm glad that I read, but I think the concept was more intriguing to me than the execution of the book. And what I mean by that is that it's a book that has a speculative element. Actually, this is one of two books where I went in thinking it was going to be one thing, but it was completely different. I'll talk about that other book later. But essentially, this is a story about two Salvadorian girls who are seeking asylum in the United States when their plea is denied Marisol agrees to be part of this experimental procedure where she will have to wear this device that transfers other people's traumas to her whether it be PTSD, grief, depression, etc. So the premise is extremely intriguing but the focus on this book is really on relationships and a young lesbian's girl discovery and journey to self-acceptance and those elements were done beautifully but if you're not going in thinking that this is the story that it's going to be this is one of those stories that's going to focus more on the speculative elements about how this procedure works and all of the scientific things around that that is not the case so just go in having the right expectations the other book that i read where my expectations were not met because of what i thought the book was going to be is the ministry of time by kalian bradley so to sum it up this is a speculative romance time travel novel that reads like a slice of life and the premise is that time travel is possible in Britain is plucking people out of their timelines and they want to see how these people are adapting to the current timeline so because of this they have someone that they call a bridge and that bridge is supposed to help them adjust to their current life we follow a bridge and one of the people that was plucked from their timeline so the focus of this novel is on the adaptation of the people who were plucked from their timeline and the ways in which they are adapting adapting to the current time and discovering all of these things that they didn't have available and that part was honestly really fascinating it's just it's a very slow moving book there's also this very slow burn romance and none of the mechanics are explained apart from that there is a possible conspiracy that is under play there are also some passages in this book that are beautifully written that honestly just made me want to keep reading it's the reason that i finished it but i think the author just tried to do too much within the scope of this novel so do it that way you will the next book that i read is the stardust grail by yume kitasai i can't put my finger on it but this book left me wanting for more which i was not expecting because i read this author's previous novel and i really liked it yeah i can't really put my finger on it but i will say if you're someone who does not read sci-fi and you've been wanting to dip your toes into the genre i think this is a good one to start off with because it's really accessible really easy to read and it has this really fun high story but set in space so i think it's a great introduction the next book that i finished is the eyes are the best part by monica kim this is a debut novel and i actually really ended up enjoying this one if you're someone who's squeamish i'd say beware before diving in because there are graphic depictions of eyeballs and consumption of eyeballs so beware so this is a character driven novel about a young woman who is in college and her obsession and compulsion to eat eyeballs apart from that the author does tackle other themes like family dynamics the female experience and especially through the lens of asian women who are often fetishized by white men when i tell you that some of these passages made my skin crawl and just made me so angry the author is really talented and she knew how to write the male white gaze it was just creepy i just yeah it just made me feel really uncomfortable at times which i think was the goal but yeah so solid read really liked it i will be reading more by this author these next two books were probably my two favorite reads of june the first one of those is tiananmen square by lei wen this is a historical fiction novel and it's also a coming of age story about a girl growing up post-cultural revolution leading up to the tiananmen square protests and her participation in them i don't know what happened but the rest of my footage just it's, it's gone, so we're just gonna refilm this part. We were talking about Tiananmen Square by Lei Wen, which 
would be one of the two favorite books that I read in the month of June. And I think I left off talking about the title of the book and that it can be deceiving because even though it is titled Tiananmen Square, the book and story really focuses on the coming of age tale of this girl leading up to the Tiananmen Square protest. The Tiananmen Square protests only really show up in the last 20% of the book, I would say. We start off following young Lei from when she's a young girl, she's a child, playing with her childhood friends, going to college, experiencing the woes and frustrations of first love, having this tumultuous relationship with her mother, experiencing grief when someone in her family passes. And what I found particularly interesting about this book is that I feel like a lot of books that I read where there's either a revolution or protests that happen, we tend to follow protagonists who are very involved in this process or who just have this really intense desire to participate and change the world. And this is not what's happening here. We're following this girl who is struggling with her mental health. She's trying to figure out her life. She doesn't know what she wants to do. She is blindly loving this person that doesn't love her back. And through all of this, life is just going through her. Life is passing by her until she meets a group of people and she finds her found family and she gets wrapped up in these protests and that just really worked for me because I think a lot of us are just going through life and not necessarily thinking we're going to be the next heroes but it shows that you can still participate and be part of something bigger than yourself. Lei as our protagonist is not particularly likable. I wanted to shake her several times, she frustrated me several times but I still found it to be a really moving and impactful novel. The last book is one that I don't know how to fully talk about. I didn't know quite how to feel about it. It's definitely one that is the sum of its parts because as I was reading it, I was like, what am I reading? But I also had this equally intense desire to sort of take all of these plot points and all of these threads that the author laid out for us and figure out how they're all interconnected. So that book is Fury by Cleo Mendoza and this is translated from Spanish by Christina McSweeney. One of the things that really stood out to me about this book was the setting. It has this really vivid and atmospheric portrayal of an endless desert that is both suffocating but also on a loop and interconnected. I don't even know if that sentence made sense but parts of this book felt hallucinatory. It felt like I was watching someone else's dream but I was there in their dream with them. Cleo Mendoza is a Mexican poet and you can definitely tell by the way that she ends up blending reality and myth and dreams so well. It just it blended so well. I realize I haven't told you what this book is about and I don't think I can. Part of it is just diving in and figuring out how everything is connected but what I can tell you is that we follow a bunch of different characters who are searching for love and sometimes find love but sometimes find violence and it's about the human experience. That's really really vague. Yeah it was definitely I think my favorite book of June. Once this video is up I'll go ahead and film my July wrap up. I had such a great reading month in July so I can't wait to tell you about all the books that I read then. Okay bye thanks for watching.